Hey guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how you can do conditional branches based on if the player is in a certain region. So whenever the player touches region 3, for example, something will happen to the player. Now, before you mention, hey, Lunar Complex, you could just put a, uh, if player touches events, just send player back here or do something. Or if players X and Y equals 7, 3, do something. Well, if you're going to do option one which is just put an event here and if the player touches it have the have something happen to the player you're gonna have to copy that event multiple times tens of if not hundreds of times and i really don't want that many events just you know hanging out on my map there and uh, if you do option two you're gonna have to check for if players coordinates are the same as this one which is seven three if it's the same as nine three if it's the same as eleven three and it's just you're going to have too many if statements and it's it's just a whole bunch of a mess and you don't want to mess with that. So I just did regions and I picked region three just because you're, you know, it's just one of the regions I decided to pick. And uh, basically this kind of example here is uh, if the player steps off the path, I will show you guys this actually. So imagine if the path isn't there and the player kind of has to figure out what that path is. If the player just decides to step off, it plays a little sound effect and the player gets teleported back to the beginning so then the player knows hey maybe I should go up okay this is cool let's go up again up oh, nope we have to go left or right from up there or something and uh, basically that's just one example you could use this for you could use it for hundreds of other examples just different sort of checks I since RPG maker doesn't have this built in so if I try and go to conditional branches uh, nothing in here says um, anything about player touch region uh, so basically what you're gonna want to do is at the very beginning of any game make sure you keep track of the players coordinates the X and Y coordinates and to do that you're gonna uh, what I typically do is run a main loop in a in a, any event that the player starts the game in and uh, what it does is it just turns on some switch and then it never this event goes away forever like it gets stuck here and um, so basically this event just runs one time only and forever that's it what it does is it's going to turn on a common event that i call main loop or you know game start whatever you want to call it uh basically what this does is it runs in parallel and it keeps track of the player's x coordinate and the y coordinate and puts those into 17 and 18 variable 17 and 18 respectively also what i'm going to do is run a script and in this script there's going to be an if statement and in this if statement, we have game map dot region ID. So what that does is it checks for a region ID. Inside this region ID for its coordinates, I'm putting the variable 17, which is the player's X, and variable 18, which is the player's Y, into this region's X and Y coordinate. So if that coordinate equals 3, then do whatever is inside these uh, curly braces. And inside these curly braces, I have game switches, dot set value 16 and true uh, basically what that means is set switch 16 on so switch 16 I have labeled uh, where is it here it is player pitfall and when player pitfall runs uh, when it turns on it's gonna turn on it's gonna it's gonna run this common event and uh, what it does is play a sound effect transfer the player and then turn itself off. So I like to label all of my common events that are a quick one-time run only, the name of the common event and then end off. So it runs and then it turns itself off. So back to my main loop in this if statement, we just are checking to see if the player is over any region. Like if the player's X and Y are the same as the region's X and Y, and to change whichever region we want to check for, we just change the number down over here so I'm checking for region 3 so if X and Y of player matches any of region 3's X and Y's we're gonna do stuff and that's the stuff we're gonna do right there and that's basically all that you uh, really need to know about conditional branch region checking whatever you want to refer to it as uh, it's it's pretty simple and it's very useful if you want to do things like make sure players here uh, if they're here can they use this item and uh, it just helps get rid of a whole bunch of events you have to copy paste or a whole bunch of conditional branches to check for the player's location. It's just very easy and it's very, it's very useful for changing things. Like say I wanted to change this kind of maze thing 
and maybe block off whoa that's a lot of them block off like those two things up there i would have to go and find where um you know i could easily just copy paste any events i made here and put them here or if i made an event that keeps track of the players x and y i'd have to change those variables to also incorporate those two squares up there and that's just too much work i really don't want to deal with that so i just decided hey why not just make it region based so that's kind of what i did and i did mention briefly this in my past video where it does go over this but it does that's not the point of my last video the point of the last video was to kind of spawn events on a certain region if player has so and so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was very useful to you and maybe you could use it in your game and thanks for watching